TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, don't forget, we are a partner with the Blueprint Mastermind, man. The link is down in the description. We do uh, do the podcast over there. We started the group podcast, which are really lit, man. Which are really lit. So, you know, when I come over there, they're going to help me. But while we here, let's help them. Let's go over there and sub up, man. Um, don't forget, I do have the Facebook. Dang, it ain't even up. That's crazy. I do got a Facebook, man, where all my old videos have been migrated to. It's right here. The link is going to be down in the description description once we get it once y'all see this but this is taking too long so let's just get to the point um this is officer ex officer david carr man this is this is i'm gonna do a reaction video man this is uh they're gonna tell us everything that we need to hear about this this is channel four news so i want to get everything i heard about check this it, out obviously. i'm gonna show you how i afforded this car Okay, you ready? All right. Ugh. I do not care. <laughs> you feel me? For more than two decades, David. I look like he's. A... This dude looks like the, 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 every allegation that ever occurred on in his name. He looked like the type. All right. For more than two decades, David Carrick, a serial rapist, hid behind his police uniform, telling women nobody would believe them because he was an officer. But today, after spending Abusing years imprisoning power. and controlling his victims, it was Carrick in police custody. Inside Southwark Crown Court, he admitted to nearly 50 sex crimes. This is a man who relentlessly degraded, belittled... Sex Just want narwhal crown prosecution services actually assaulted and raped women as time went on the severity of his offending intensified as he became emboldened thinking he would get away with it the scale of the degradation carrick subjected his victims to is unlikely he's going to have one of the worst prison sentences and, and the crown don't even have to prosecute like the crown doesn't even have to take it out the, the inside once he's in there it's going to be one of the worst times of his life <laughs> anything i've encountered in my 34 years with the crown prosecution service and that's facts we now know david carrick used his power to abuse at least 12 women subjecting them to appalling acts of violence calling one his slave the former soldier used his belt to beat his victims as investigating officers said carrick thrived off humiliating women locking his victims in an understairs cupboard in his home, no bigger than a dog crate, for hours on end. But there are now serious questions for the police as to how David Carrick, a serial rapist and abuser of women, was allowed to remain in the Metropolitan Police for more than 20 years. Because there's a fact, bro. There has to be mil there's has to be a bunch of complaints lodged against this dude. You know he was on their radar. On at least nine occasions, the Met and other police forces were aware of his behaviour, despite the fact that he wasn't arrested until 2021. Today, police apologise for the missed opportunities to catch Carrick. It's not good enough. I absolutely it's not good enough. take responsibility on the behalf of the Metropolitan Police Service. That's unbelievable. All them allegations against that man, and you stand there not fulfilling your duty. You. that we have missed opportunities to identify those patterns of behavior he should have been dismissed you didn't you didn't have missed opportunity you had nine opportunities you just didn't do it from the police service a long time ago and we know as a serving police officer he then used his power and his position as a police officer uh, to to exert power and control over his victims 
Police, by their own admission, fail to do their detective work and join up the dots of a serial offender. In 2002, failed or overlooked. Carrick is accused of harassment and assault while in his two-year probationary period, but no further action is taken. In 2009, Hertfordshire Police received a report of domestic abuse involving Carrick. Again, no charge is brought. And in 2016, Carrick is a suspect in a Hampshire police investigation following an allegation of harassment. He is not arrested and the investigation is later closed. And in 2019, another complaint. Hertfordshire police receive a report of Carrick assaulting a woman and causing criminal damage during a domestic incident. No further action is taken. But in 2021, Carrick was finally arrested for rape. Yet he was allowed to remain as a Met police officer on restricted duties. This. this was four this. months after the murder of Sarah this. Everard. The force were under increased scrutiny. He should never... So that's the only reason he was arrested, because he was under in, in, increased scrutiny, is what they're saying, basically. He should never have been a police officer. He should never have been allowed to serve for so security. long. After the appalling murder of Sarah Everard, the government promised us change, yet that has totally failed. There have been no national standards on vetting or conduct introduced, and women have been badly let down. We have to have fundamental change. Today, the government said it was reviewing the way abusive police officers were dismissed from the force. It's clear that standards and culture need Home to change in policing. Swelling. And that's why I'm driving forward changes to support the police and to support chief constables around the country in doing so. It comes as the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, admitted that the force's vetting procedures were inadequate. I'm sorry, and I know we've let, um, we've let women down. I mean, I think we failed over um, two decades to be as ruthless as we ought to be in guarding our own integrity. We haven't been as intrusive as we should be, joining the dots on cases to spot problematic officers. And there was a clear pattern of behaviour, and the victims painted... That, that, that's that attitude where you got to stick with the badge. ...did a strikingly similar picture of a man who had psychologically, sexually and physically abused them. But the Met said that David Carrick had been vetted on two occasions, in 2001 and 2017. Both times he passed. Over two decades, police officer David Carrick abused and tortured women. That much is clear. you telling me that... Th Decades, police officer David Carrick abused and tortured women. That much is clear. But why was he allowed to get away with it for so long? I told him, hey, mom, I spent eight... There has to be fundamentally something wrong within the whole vetting process, within all of that. There's, there's, the whole thing needs to be taken apart and redone. Here's on this degree, but I hate it. Or it's not going to work. It's not going to be fixed. You can't just single out a part and then fix it because who knows if that's the source of the problem you know what i'm saying like we nobody the computer is going so slow i didn't press mute first of all pain group end violence against women i started by asking for her reaction to the news of david carrick's offenses well i think undoubtedly um, this is going to be further damaging women's trust and confidence in policing. Carrick's very egregious behaviour uh, should have shown a number of red flags to everyone around him, quite frankly. But I think um, what this is telling us is that um, the police do not have systems in place to deal with misconduct, that they are not taking uh, reports of things like domestic abuse, harassment seriously enough. And yet it comes after the dreadful killing of Sarah Everard. That was supposed to be a watershed. And at that very time, the Met and the government were promising seismic change. This officer who was reported, as you say, to police many times, was still serving, still wearing a badge, still carrying a gun. Why do you think that has happened? Carrying a gun? So what type of police officer was... Oh, he was Met police. Happened. I think what it's showing us is that we have a problem with um, misogyny in the police force. Within the institution, there has not been enough done to transform uh, the culture of misogyny, which enables uh, perpetrators to exist. Well, it's a shame that I even had to do this, but... You know what I'm saying? But anyway... 
exist in plain sight. We need to, to be looking at, at why people like Carrick um, and others who uh, also exhibit behaviours and attitudes that are misogynistic um, and who commit uh, misconduct, sexual misconduct, it is the biggest form of corruption in UK policing, uh, uh, police abusing their powers for sexual purposes. Why the... Yeah, that's, that's unacceptable. That is unacceptable. I was wanted to be like, is that the biggest? But yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the biggest one. <laughs> This isn't being identified, why action isn't being taken. This is about also expecting officers to come forward and uh, if they've noticed that they have colleagues on the force who are behaving in a way that is misogynistic, that they feel able to, to report it and, and that there is meaningful consequences that follow. So it's not just that the systems are not working. Facts. Facts. When it comes to that, it shouldn't be no, oh, this is a band of... Brotherly badge, brotherly badge, we got to stick to, no, no, no. Y'all got wives, kids, brothers, sisters, daughters, all of that. So it should be a, yo, nah, bro, nah, we can't rock with you behind this one, you got to go. On every level. Working, in your view, it's also that too many other officers, too many leaders, are turning a blind eye. I think they are maybe not thinking that they have a cultural issue to solve. Um, one bad apple in, in a police force has been the, the message we've been hearing for a really long time and it doesn't cut it anymore. We've got to get to grips with um, actually what's the culture you're creating. And it, it's not just about the Met. Oh, there's a lot of focus on the Metropolitan Police, but it's not just about the Met. The former Home Secretary, Priti Patel, back in March, said that violence against women and girls would be made a strategic policing requirement. In your view, has that happened and is it changing anything? Tell us. We thought that was a very important step and that the political uh, will was to try and root out um, violence against women and girls from society, from our institutions. But what has happened has not met that um, promise at all. I think uh, the strategic policing requirement to, to make violence against women a priority hasn't necessarily resulted in much change on the ground. There certainly doesn't seem to be any resourcing that is following uh, violence against women and girls. And, and that's a, there's, a, there's a big uh, question for, um, for the Home Secretary, who is supposed to oversee the, the police in, in this country, um, to answer for why we have a police force. So the Home Secretary, secu they oversee the police force. Okay. Force that is harboring perpetrators so that's where the start um, is. Of, of violence against women. And we don't seem to be able to get on top of the problem. So I think there's a lot more that government need to do and they, they also need to be accountable for what happens next. I mean, just briefly, it's hard to imagine women's trust in the police falling any further. Where do you think it stands after this today? I think that a lot of victims and, and survivors of, of rape and other forms of violence against women and girls are, are going to be reeling from these latest revelations. Uh, they are going to be traumatised by some of the detail of his depravity um, and are going to be wondering whether the police are people they can come forward and report to. I would say... Has he been... I want to know what his sentencing is. That's really gone. You know what I'm saying? I need to hear this. The sentence. This man need life with no parole that um, for the police to really rebuild that trust and confidence, they have to show that they're taking this, this very seriously. But alongside that, the whole response to how you investigate sexual violence and domestic abuse has to improve. We're still um, grappling with very, very low levels of, of prosecution when it comes to crimes like rape, and we still don't have a, the right level of specialism when it comes to investigating these crimes either. All of that has to improve before women uh, can feel that um, the police is a, is a service for them and that they can access justice by reporting. But a bleak day, though. It's an incredibly bleak day for, for victims and survivors of violence against women and girls, and I know that, that a lot of people are going to be reeling from this, and I know that also many officers are going to be disgusted by this individual's actions. However, we all have a, a part to play here in calling out misogyny, and I would say to officers on the force that they should be coming forward and reporting their colleagues when they um, exhibit these kinds of worrying, concerning behaviours. Uh, everyone has a, a role to do in, in getting um, rapists and abusers out of the police force. Andrea Simon, thanks very much for talking to us today. Thank you, Jackie.
it all sounds so promising, but you know. Well, joining me now is Donna Jones, the Conservative Police and Crime Commissioner for Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Thanks very much for joining us this evening. Nearly 50 offences, including more than 20 rapes. Yet the whole time, David Carrick was able to wear a police uniform, sport a police badge, remain a serving officer. So what has out. gone wrong like, here? That, that is crazy. Like, What do you think? How? Well, this is a, a huge stain on British policing today and it's clear that the Met's vetting process and in fact the way that they handle complaints and reports of misconduct with their police officers has let women down and it's led to some of those that were some of the most degrading crimes as we've just heard from him raping, starving, enslaving those 12 poor women that uh, were subject to his crimes over those two decades. I think what we need to be clear about here is that there are tens of thousands of decent men and women serving in the Metropolitan Police Service today and Sir Mark Rowley is clearly very focused on wanting to drive up the standards in the Metropolitan Police Service. However, there are clear fundamental... Let's stay on the subject at hand. We didn't need that. ...systematic failings of their I vetting service, already. but more importantly also of their police standards department, who are not suspending officers and bringing those corruption allegations to bear quick enough. And that has allow allowed him to be on the streets of Britain, carrying a warrant card, and therefore in unduly influencing his victims um, to silence them. And, and that's a real shame. I mean, so you talk about the, the new commissioner, Mark Rowley. He's made it really clear that he is determined to reform... The Met, specifically issues like this. Do you think he can do it? Do you trust him? Well, as well as being a no, 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 Donna Jones. Be real. Just answer the question straight up. He can do it. Do you trust him? Yes or no? Well, as well as being a police and crime commissioner here, I'm also the national lead for victims, and I am deeply concerned by what appears to be a deep-rooted and toxic culture in the metropolitan yes police. Yes or no? Now, you talk there about Mark's determination, and I, I've met Mark, I've worked with Mark uh, over the last few months since he's been the commissioner of the Met. I think he is an outstanding, exemplary example of a, of a police commissioner, of somebody, one of the most senior cops in the country. However, can any one person change the culture of such a large police force. It's like trying to turn the Titanic. I've argued for some time now, well Good over answer. a year since the death of uh, Sarah Everard, that the Metropolitan Police Service is too large, that I believe that it needs to be broken up perhaps into three or four smaller police forces so that there is an ability for the individuals at the top of those three or four police forces to get under the root of the problem, to make sure that they are really driving down change from the top down and ensuring that there is a clean-up of a culture because not all police forces are, are, are operating in this way. And I think where you have complaints made, you know, you often will get in all industries people who do things that they shouldn't do. Police officers should be the most upstanding members of the community. But really, police forces should be judged on how they deal with those complaints when they come. And realistically, firefighters are what police officers should be. Come in, and in most police forces across the country, somebody like David Carrick would have been suspended immediately, not well, no I want to come on to guilt, that in just but without pay. Second, whilst there was actually, a full and thorough investigation. I want to come on to the issue of other police forces if we can, just a second. So briefly, just to be clear, despite his good intentions, you think um, the new commissioner... Yeah, right. He's yes, just not that. going to be able to do this, that something much more fundamental has to happen to them. W Journalism, come back to it and Next. get a clear answer. Over a, period, a long period of time, perhaps, yes. I think he's very, very determined. But if my honest opinion is I think the Metropolitan Police Force is, is ginormous. It's the size of four or five average police forces in this country. I think that is why people are able to hide in plain sight in their uniforms. Uh, they are able to operate in a way that is toxic, which is a... So in the future, yes. But right now, no because it's going to take time. Abusive and deeply criminal. Uh, people are being murdered, raped. Uh, women particularly are, are being put in a vulnerable position by men who are, let's be honest, predatory monsters who are operating on the streets of Britain in police uniforms. Um, I think Mark is extremely determined. I think he's very professional and committed, but I do think the Metropolitan Police Service is too large, and yes, I believe it should be broken up.
Uh, and just finally and briefly again, if you would, the police inspectorate as far back as 2016 says sexual misconduct within the police force across the country, across England and Wales, is the gravest form of corruption. So they have been saying for years that it is across England and Wales. If forces aren't listening to the inspectorate, you know, is the um, inspectorate right. itself failing? Are the systems in place to monitor police forces failing? Well, of course, the Met doesn't reflect um, all of British policing. And no, HMIC, Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary, adds some fantastic value in my own force. They've done some great reviews, and we've got some fantastic learning that's come from that. And in fact, the Met Police referred themselves to HMIC around seven or eight months ago, post the death of Sarah Everard. And there was a review undertaken by them in 2022 of the vetting process. It came up with 43 recommendations. Now, most police forces are... And how many of those... 43 were implemented. Working their way through those, making sure that they have implemented them. I don't know where the Met are in terms of their implementation of those. But we've heard from Sir Mark Rowley himself today that they have failed and they are not doing what they need to do to keep people safe. And that surely has to be the number one priority for any police force. Alright, I'm done, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Huh? Tell you a little bit like comment. Let me know what you think.